I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. Recycling in Ann Arbor has gone through some changes and to clear up any confusion about accepted materials, the city is updating stickers on single family homes curbside carts. Learn more next. The City Place updated black and white recycling stickers on all available recycle carts at single family homes the week of June 27th. If your cart was missed, a sticker was left for you to place on your cart yourself. To apply the sticker to the lid, first clean the old label and the surface around it with all-purpose cleaner. If the lid is dirty, the sticker won't stick. It will stick to the dirt instead of the lid. Let the lid dry. Remove one side of the sticker back and place it at the edge of the old information. Remove the other side of the back of the sticker and slide your hand across it as you apply it to the cart lid. For questions, contact customer service. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more in exactly 30 seconds. This July 16th and 17th in Washtenaw County, expect the ground to rattle, the windows to shake, and all eyes to the sky during Thunder Over Michigan. Being a pilot representing our country takes discipline, perseverance, and is not for the faint of heart. Growing up, I always wanted to join the military, kind of like my dad, and I always wanted to be a pilot, so combining the two uh, led me to go into the Naval Academy. Fortunate enough to get a pilot slot, you always have a little bit of question, like, can I be successful doing this? And, um, you know, you just kind of roll the dice and dare for greatness. When it comes to this type of flying experience, it's a new challenge for, sh for sure. Uh, and flying close together is not something we're, we're used to or comfortable with. But uh, I don't think you'd even apply to this team if you were fearful. The U.S. Navy Blue Angels and the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds work together to bring awe-inspiring maneuvers as they soar as fast as the speed of sound. It is around-the-clock jet training um, in order to put on this demonstration safely and, and make it look second to none. But honestly, we share so much in common. Uh, Julius is talking about the training. We basically have the exact same training. In fact, towards the end of our training season, we go out and visit them in El Centro uh, to learn best practices, share uh, you know war stories, if you will. We're always looking to improve our processes and being able to share our best practices and how we do things is invaluable to putting on the absolute best flight demonstration uh, that we can, that both teams can do for the American public. Don't miss your chance to experience some of the nation's best pilots in action at the 2022 Thunder Over Michigan. Visit yankeeairmuseum.org for tickets. There's no better way to celebrate America's independence than watching bright lights bursting in the air. Before you put on your own fireworks display, there's some pertinent safety information. Learn more about fireworks safety and laws in this month's City Roundup in 60. <laughs> Hi there, Mike Kennedy, Fire Chief, Ann Arbor Fire Department, here to talk about firework safety for the upcoming holiday. Fireworks in the city of Ann Arbor can only be shot off on July 3rd, 4th, and 5th between 8 a.m. and midnight on those three days. Fireworks are not allowed to be displayed on city parks, on city right-of-way, or city streets. And you have to have permission from any property owner that you're going to set them off at. You are responsible for any damage or fires that's caused by fireworks, and we always recommend that the safest fireworks are those that you go and see by a professional display at a safe distance. The July 4th holiday is the number one day of the year for ER visits, and a lot of that is attributable to fireworks. So we hope everyone has a happy and safe July 4th holiday. If you're gonna see fireworks, please go to a professional display. Thank you. 
There's a place right on the main drag of downtown Ann Arbor that's changing the face as art as we know it. Cultureverse is a location to experience the arts in person, but that's just a fraction of its offerings. This nonprofit org is combining art and technology to bridge the gap between the creator and community. Joining me is Aubrey Martinson, director of Cultureverse. Welcome to the show. Aubrey, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up at Cultureverse. Oh, um, so I have been working uh, in the arts, uh, primarily uh, nonprofits in Washtenaw County for about 20 years. Um, I have a BFA in art and English from Albion, and that sort of led me down this path, um, starting at the Ann Arbor Arts Center and then just winding through a few um, nonprofit uh, arts organizations through the past 20 years. And I have been uh, so lucky to have continued to work in the arts. Um, a little brief stint helping my husband open a brewery uh, but then, you know, back to the, back to the arts organizations. Um, and yeah, my friend, uh, Brad had caught wind that, um, his, uh, uh, the founder of Cultureverse wanted to start an organization and, you know, he just put me in touch with, um, Don Hicks, who is our board president and our founder. Um, and we had a beautiful conversation and, um, I dove right in. I, uh, my background is very much as in-person arts events. Um, and then working in this virtual space uh, has been a whole new thing for me. And I have an amazing team who supports my tech journey uh, as we all support the tech journey of artists uh, and organizations um, throughout Southeast Michigan and beyond. So tell us exactly what Cultureverse is. Yeah, so Cultureverse is uh, an organization that is honestly a lot about joyfully exploring what can happen when we put interesting tools like 3D scanners, uh, virtual environments um, into the hands of artists. And so most simply, we can help artists build a virtual gallery with a tool that's uh, called Saganworks. It's actually programmed uh, and built out of the same building that we're housed in at 309 South Main in Ann Arbor. Um, and so that's a, we work very closely in partnership with Saganworks to be able to uh, build spaces with and for our artists. Um, and we also, uh, we also do a lot of work in terms of what's possible with 3D scanning. So we can do, um, uh, you know, for example, one of our projects is the Stearns Collection of Musical Instruments. Uh, part of our mission is to help unseen things be seen. And that collection can't be seen by the general public. You need to be a student or an academic or a you know, scholar to get access. Um, and so we're just taking a small part of that collection, scanning it with our 3D scanners and creating a virtual presentation that anybody can see anywhere in the world. All you need is a mobile phone or a laptop. You just need access to the internet. Um, so bridging the gap between, um, like you said, you know, the creator and the community, um, and you know, also curators and the community, uh, we, we seek to reduce those boundaries so that anybody can see and experience uh, something uh, enriching for them. And, and that's, that's kind of the space we're working in. We also do, um, in-person, um, exhibitions, which have been so much fun. Um, bringing people in to meet in person is still so important to me as a, as a human and to my team, we really value the in-person experiences. And so we have these, um, you know, in-person gallery exhibits um, that uh, that also are a kind of a gateway for people to learn about what's possible in the virtual world. Everybody is very familiar with what a gallery looks like. It's art on walls. Um, and we want to bring people into something they're comfortable with. They already understand that mental model so that we can also share what's possible outside of the boundaries of walls. Yeah, I will say when I visited the physical space, I sort of uh, started with going to the space first, just to kind of see what it was about to understand a little bit more. And then there are things in that space that help you to understand more of that technological 3D world that you're also working in. And then I went on the website and I was like, okay, and then I sort of dove into what was actually happening, like the endless, I mean, endless possibilities that are happening with Cultureverse. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a really beautiful space to be in because there um, is so much possibility and we've grown our team to be able to um, uh, really reach more of those opportunities. But even still, um, 
there will always be more adventures to be had than we can possibly have. And uh, so we're at this really lovely point in our existence where we're trying to figure out uh, really how to best serve our, our audience. We've been, we've existed for a year and we've had a lot of like, kind of uh, a lot of explore, exploration and playfulness with what we've done. And we think we've figured out, you know, kind of our menu of services and it's, uh, it can be as simple as, you know, building a virtual gallery or it can be uh, something much more complex than that. Um, and we're having a lot of fun figuring out, you know, what that is and what artists really want from, from, from our team. And that's been so lovely to build those relationships and, and find the best way to help people. I appreciate that you also mentioned the Sagan works part, because when you are walking downtown, that's like the big sign that you see on the top of the building. Like that's like a good indicator that you're in the right spot. Cause I think I walk past not thinking, and then I'm like, Oh wait, it's back this way. I'm, I passed it for a second. So, but talk about, you know, walking into that space and what you are seeing right now. I think you got some work from a local artist. Yeah, absolutely. And so for context, for anybody who does want to walk um, to see our space, we're right between Shalimar and Jolly Pumpkin and across the street from uh, Blue Llama uh, on Main Street in Ann Arbor. Um, and so somebody would walk in the street and uh, this through the end of July, what they'll see is the work of Doug Coombe. Doug is a local photographer and um, uh, and, you know, one of the things we like to do is highlight, um, you know, unseen things and, and Doug kind of helps amplify that mission because his mission as a photographer is to capture images of bands that he thinks deserve more recognition. And that's sort of one of the things he's done throughout his career. And he's also, you know, there's photos of uh, Bob Seger and Iggy Pop. So, so not just people who need to be uh, more, who need more exposure. Um, so Doug is just a lovely human and loved by so many musicians and people in Ann Arbor. He photographs for Concentrate and Metro Times and, and many other publications. So even if you haven't heard his name, you've probably seen his work um, and uh, what we have in our gallery is primarily photographs of bands and musicians from the Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti area. Uh, we really wanted to make sure that we were drawing from our most local community uh, with this exhibit. And uh, there's, you know, I honestly didn't count. We were just so furiously hanging art on the walls. Doug probably knows how many, but you know, there's there's a lot of images. The, the gallery is just full of photos um, that Doug has uh, taken over the years of some really legendary uh, music. Musician. So it's so much fun to see. It's really beautifully set up. It really is a lot for the eye to see. And you can just kind of wander around for a while and check out so many different things. And you're like, uh, even for instance, my husband was in there and he was like, that girl used to intern at CTN, which was funny because I was like, I, it was before my time, but he was like, you got to get a shot of her. She interned at CTN. So yeah, it's like people that, you know, I mean, people that, you know, on the big stage and then people that you'll, maybe you just met, you know, and in passing. It's really cool. Yeah, thank you. That's That's been really fun. And the opening reception for that show in particular was a really beautiful night. Even, you know, even the security guard that we hired, he's from Ann Arbor and, and he had friends there at, you know, and he was like, this is like homecoming for me. You know, it was such a beautiful experience for everybody. And it really was it did have this kind of homecoming vibe to it where people were just so excited to see each other and get together. And, you know, musicians, they're so busy. They're always, you know, they, they have a hard time, you know, uh, I think right now it was, it was just nice to have one thing to bring a bunch of musicians together. And then we partnered with other organizations and later that night there was a show at the blind pig. And then there was a show later in the weekend at the Ark and at the Ravens club. And so it really took that one thing and then expanded it. And we do that same thing virtually too, where we have this, the seed of an idea, and then we figure out how we can expand it. Um, so if you do come in through the in-person gallery, you can all also get access to the virtual gallery that Doug has built. Um, and we decided for this show in particular to scan the blind pig and then recreate it digitally so that there's a, a digital twin of the blind pig in our, uh, you can, you know, you can get to it anywhere, but um, you could also get to it on an iPad in our gallery. And then from there, there's an endless amount of opportunity for Doug to put on his virtual show because 
there's an endless amount of shelf space and wall space and and it's it's infinite what Doug can do and Doug's repertoire is expansive and so he needs that kind of vessel that can contain a lot of information to give some context to the images and uh and it was so kind of the blind pig staff to let us uh scan it and and that was a very fun experience in and of itself are there other things that you can do when you actually go to the physical space or should you just hop online then you know it depends on the uh, it depends on the gallery there are times when we have our 3d body scanner set up um this show didn't warrant it um uh, but we do have a 3d body scanner um, it's portable, so we just tear it down and we we store it when uh, we we aren't using it. But it was up for our last exhibit, which was an exhibit with Mike Hahn. Um, we do have other 3D scanners, handheld 3D scanners, and a 3D printer. So there's uh, opportunities to explore those tools. Um, uh, we'll be doing demos in the near future of what those tools can do, as well as demonstrating some editing of the 3D scans. Um, and uh, yeah, and we also will be hosting in person. Uh, kind of drop in trainings to learn how to build a virtual environment. And the tool we'll be using for that will be Saganworks. It's a very natural partnership. Um, the staff of Saganworks is literally in the in the back room of of our space. So they are always able to pop out and answer any questions. So so yeah, there's and and uh, in addition to that, for this show in particular, Doug is going to be bringing in some uh, musical acts. Uh, so we're going to be posting that really soon. So cultureverse.org or find us on social media. Uh, we'll be posting those things through July uh, 24th. We'll be hosting uh, some more programming with Doug uh, to, to do a deeper dive into some of these musicians and their music and to really kind of highlight the, the level of talent that we have in our community. Tell me about how you sort of build this relationship with artists, um, it, albeit for the gallery or these 3D galleries. You know, you're getting, like you said, you're opening doors to things that people would not have a chance to see otherwise. So how do you make these connections? You know, um, so having been in the arts community for 20 years and having friends who have been in the arts community, uh, you know, some of the early projects um, were working, like, you know, relying on our personal networks, which are uh, somewhat broad. And, um, and then once we work with somebody, they are, uh, you know, we immediately will say, oh, you know, they will say, can you, uh, can you talk with my friend? Can you know? So, so a lot of it is, it's sort of started that personal network referral basis sort of thing. Um, but as a nonprofit, we really want to be sure that we're serving everybody and we've got access to a, a variety of communities. Um, so we've met a lot of lovely humans through, um, you know, through our work uh, with other organizations. So for example, we partnered with Wonderful Productions and we met Lynn Settles, who is in Ypsilanti and Lynn is then kind of opening doors for us in Ipsy. Um, and then we have just a very simple web form on our website. So anybody who sees this and is like, I want my work to be seen, um, it's cultureverse.org. Uh, there is a, just a very simple web form to fill out to, um, to kind of understand what somebody's looking for. Uh, we can do very simple things like virtual galleries or when we have uh, you know additional capacity, we can do more complex things like build custom virtual spaces. Um, so yeah, it really is, you know, and my email is director at cultureverse.org. So people can just reach out to me directly too, if they have any other questions. And I'm happy to sort of help navigate through um, how to work with Cultureverse and what we're all about. Why don't you tell us about some of the virtual galleries that are currently available? And obviously you don't have to tell us about all of them, but a couple that maybe just stand out for you that people should check out. Yeah, so um, there's one that will be coming uh, to our website soon, uh, which I'm very excited about. It was uh, from our, our last exhibit uh, with Mike Hahn, and we built a custom space with Mike to his specifications. Then uh, one of the things we did is during the opening night, we scanned everybody who wanted to get scanned. We scanned 94 people. We then wrapped those scans in Mike Hahn's artwork, and they became part of a sculpture garden inside of his virtual gallery which was just so much fun and epic. And so people can navigate through and see, see themselves wrapped in Mike's art. It was very fun. Um, let's see, gosh, on our website, I think, yeah, the, um, the Doug Coombe uh, Sagan is, is top of mind because that one is so um, interesting and important to me. Um, you know, we in, in invested some, you know, interesting time in, into that one. And, and Doug is just like literally so prolific that it's, it's exciting for me to 
see to have people dive really deep into that one. Um, and let's see prior to that. I mean, one of the very first artists we work with is such a dear human and, um, they're, they make work under the acronym of, uh, RCKBNY, um, also known as, um, Stefan, also known as Jason Johnson. Um, and his is on there. He's got two virtual galleries. One is just photography and the other is just paintings. Um, he was our very first, um, exhibit in our gallery too. And one of our first virtual exhibits. So, um, he's special to us because he kind of was like, sure, I'll do a virtual gallery with you. He was very open to it. Um, and then there's another one, Timothy Blackman uh, worked with our software to, to recreate a special space for him. He, he had a space where he created artwork and uh, he wanted to recreate that loft apartment and sort of, so his friends could kind of come back and visit even though he no longer lived there. Uh, so just a lot of really beautiful, meaningful um, projects that, uh, that, you know, I think, I think that comes through in these virtual spaces too. So I would love to know what people think when they go to a virtual space and, and uh, just visit, uh, what, what is it like for you? To, and is this a tool that they consider using for, you know, their own purposes? I would love general public feedback on that. Is it a complicated process or does Sagan work sort of have it in the bag where it's like, you're just working there. They work with the artists to figure out what the virtual gallery gallery is. And then it's sort of made easy. Yeah, so the way I like to, uh, it's very easy, it depends on the level of customization, but um, Saganworks has, uh, it's free for anybody to use, you don't even have to work with Cultureverse to use Saganworks, it's a tool that exists, it's one of our tools in our toolkit, and it exists as a separate entity, and they're a partner of ours, um, and you know, what we, what we can bring to the table, table is uh, helping an artist, work hand in, working hand in hand with them to help them curate their exhibit. Um, so we bring our knowledge and our know-how. The tool itself is very easy to use. You simply, you can do it on your mobile device. You can do it on your, on, you know, your laptop. As long as you have access to the internet, it's uh, saganworks.com and um, create an account and you can drag files either from your phone or from your desktop into Saganworks and then place items, objects, um, PDFs, links, it's a very rich environment to display uh, to 2D objects. If there's any interest in 3D objects, that is something that, you know, they would have to work with our team or, or very closely with the team at Sagan Works to do, but um, the, the 3D objects is a bit more of a customized thing. Um, but yeah, anybody can use Sagan Works and it's really easy. And you guys are also doing some virtual reality stuff as well? We are, yeah. I um, we brought a new team member on, uh, whose name is Ramin, and uh, you know my primary intent of bringing Ramin on the team was to have somebody help with our gallery and that kind of user experience of of people being in the gallery. Um, and Ramin came sort of preloaded with this uh, interest in uh, in building VR environments, and so the Mike Khan show was our very first virtual reality um, experience where people put on the Oculus and they could walk around the environment that our digital artist, Joe Grabowski built for Mike. And that was a whole fun experience because for me, I got to see Joe's artwork like up close, you know, and, and that was really, really fun. And we will be building a virtual reality uh, exhibit for uh, Doug Coombe as well, uh, where people will be able to explore the blind pig space in a new way play music and it's going to be it's going to be really amazing that that will be released um, later this summer you know for someone that's obviously worked in the arts for a couple decades how have you seen the evolution of art and technology obviously technology is so important now to the artist yeah it is um you know i think you know when i first started it was um do I need an email address? Do I need a website, right? Like how, you know, moving from, you know, paying for your class with a paper registration, dropping it physically in the Dropbox to, you know, you know, arts organizations needing to have robust online platforms, you know, for, to, to, to engage with their, with their, um, their public. And, you know, that's the same for an individual artist too. There is, um, you know, definitely that shift to, well, what tools do you need in your toolkit? And we've had those conversations at Cultureverse, um, you know, how do we know an artist is ready to work with us? Or how do we know that they'll benefit from, from, from a virtual gallery? And we kind of have that list, like, are they on social media? Do they have Instagram? Are they able to take a, even before that, can they take an image, you know, digital image of their work 
and do they have a website? Do they have social media? And, and those are kind of some of the precursors uh, to, to, to be successful using a platform like SaganWorks. I mean, you could use it to replace a website. It really is, a, it, you could think of it as a, a virtual, a 3D website, same information, just arranged differently. Um, but we want people to be comfortable with technology in order to sort of take them to the next journey, which is into these virtual 3D gallery spaces and whatever could happen beyond those spaces. Um, so yeah, there has been a pretty big um, a pretty big transition where artists have to sort of be content creators and, and, and be able to manage that um, to, to to want to take that next step, you know, into the virtual space. And that being said, you know, we did a, a workshop with a Michigan Watercolor Society recently. And um, I would say not having um, hard statistics, but the women, it was primarily women who took that workshop of how to build a virtual gallery. And they were primarily, I'm going to say, above the age of 65, which was so wonderful to me for all the stereotype and boundary breaking that that does. It's, you know, older women who are seeking out new experiences in technology. I love seeing that. So, so um, it's not just for young people, right? It's for anybody who is interested in, in new ways to share their art with a broader audience. Well, before we go, why should people get immersed in the arts through Cultureverse? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think right now um, it's a really interesting time um, that we're living in, there's, um, there's so many companies, so many organizations, so many um, people who are hesitant to get into uh, virtual spaces um, and also excited to. And we're kind of at that intersection of the in-person and the virtual experience. Um, and uh, I would, one is, is, you know, an organizationally selfish reason because I'm curious is this something that people want to do, right? And so I want you to participate to tell me whether you like it or not. Um, but also it's, we're on the cusp of something really big. And, um, you know, one of the, we are a very human centered organization. Um, so we aren't necessarily interested in having people live in the metaverse or experience everything they do through goggles or a screen. Um, and we want to figure out how to blend those two things together so that we can still have a human, human centered world where we can also use technology to transport us to spaces that we wouldn't be able to reach because of lack of money, lack of transportation, lack of time. Um, so it really is, we're excited to be bridging that gap. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Dana. This was a treat and I appreciate you letting me join from my backyard. <laughs> for more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI. Mm -hmm.